and say g'day. I'm Dr. Paul Mason. And today, I'm going to challenge everything you think you know about this disease, atherosclerosis. <laughs> You've been told that high LDL levels coat the insides of blood vessels in much the same way that a drain gets blocked by fat. And that's just absurd. Higher LDL cholesterol levels, in fact, are associated with longevity. The overwhelming finding of this systematic review of 19 cohort studies with more than 68,000 participants was that the higher the LDL cholesterol level, the lower the chance of death. Let's take a look at exactly what LDL is. A complex molecule comprised of both lipids and proteins that your body devotes a lot of resources to produce. In pink here, you can see pure cholesterol itself. It's carried as a cargo internally, as indicated by the yellow arrow. And it's also dotted throughout the outer membrane. And you can see that cholesterol is only one component of many within an LDL particle. The fact is, though, LDL particles can and are found in atherosclerotic plaques. So does that mean it causes atherosclerosis? No. <laughs> Just because two factors coexist does not imply that one caused the other. The fact is, as shown by this paper, 75% of patients hospitalized for heart attack do not have high LDL levels. Rather, we have compelling evidence that the root cause of heart disease is actually this a blood clot, or more specifically, thrombosis. Essentially, atherosclerosis is the result of blood clots forming inside blood vessels. To begin with, red blood cells contain a chemical unique to them called glycophorin A. This chemical is not found in any other tissue in the human body, and yet, Scientists have been able to prove the presence of glycophorin A, and by extension, red blood cells, deep inside atherosclerotic plaques by using a special brown stain. Of course, blood clots are not just made of blood cells. They also contain platelets and fibrin, which forms fibrous strands binding the clot together. And both these, too, have been found buried deep inside atherosclerotic plaques. The lipid hypothesis model of heart disease cannot explain this at all. Now, one interesting thing about these clots is that they can occur episodically, over time, one on top of another, which leads to the prediction that atherosclerotic plaques would form in layers. And indeed, this is exactly what we find. Here's an example of a single layer plaque containing a lipid-rich core covered by a fibrous tissue connective cap. And here is an example of a plaque with two distinct layers, separate fibrous caps being clearly visible. Hang on, you might say. What about the cholesterol-like crystals that we see in plaques? Where do they come from? Well, it doesn't come from LDL. So first of all, understand that the LDL in atherosclerosis is contained within foam cells. These foam cells are formed when macrophages ingest damaged LDL particles. And once ingested, the LDL particle is broken down, releasing the cholesterol contained within it. The cholesterol is then bound to fatty acids, resulting in it being stored in a droplet form and they will remain in a droplet form even if they get released. Not a crystal, a droplet. That is, the cholesterol found in foam cells cannot lead to the crystalline deposits seen in atherosclerosis. Rather, the cholesterol found in atherosclerosis comes from red blood cells, 